Indeed, Lord, we come to you just as we are, O oh Lord. We acknowledge that we are sinful, but Lord, at the same time, we are grateful for your grace that is sufficient. We surrender ourselves to you this morning. Lord, may you have your way in us. May you speak to us, O oh Lord, and may you strengthen us to walk in obedience. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Shall we sit? Good morning, beloved, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for this morning. We thank him for the gift of life. He's enabled us to be here this morning. And even for a new week that we are starting, I pray that we will rejoice and be glad in this Sabbath day. I thank the Lord for the opportunity to share his word this morning, and I thank him that he's my Lord and Savior. I'm sure we still remember our theme this year. We are just starting. It's drawn from Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, and we are being reminded to be transformed. And last, last month, we had an introduction to Romans, and we went through different topics. So we'll continue to go, to go through the different sub-themes, and today we are looking at the universality of sin. And as we draw lessons from both readings, we will see that no one is righteous because we are all under sin and we are accountable to God, as was read to us. And indeed, we are all sinners. We are totally incapable of achieving righteousness on our own, and we thank God for his grace. So we've been reading the book of Romans, and please let's open our Bibles at chapter 3 because we are picking it up from there. And so at the beginning of chapter 3, and specifically verse 1 and 3, Paul's talk about, Paul talks about the differences that the Jews were creating between themselves and the Gentiles. The Jews prided themselves in the law and in circumcision. They felt they were the custodians of the law. And for them, they felt they had a better standing then before God as a result of being custodians of the law. And they always felt they were a superior breed, you know, if you look, at, if you look through the readings. So following this conversation of the Jews feeling superior, Paul asks, what then? Are we better than Jews? But then he quickly moves on and says an emphatic no. And he continues to explain the no. And this is where we are picking up our lesson from. Why does Paul say no? That, you know, there are no advantages of, um, that the Jews have over the Gentiles. Now, in explaining the no, Paul reminds, that, reminds the people that Jews do not have any advantages over the Gentiles because we are all under sin, as had been read to us. And it reminds them that the focus, the most important focus, should be on salvation, which is through faith in Jesus Christ. And that is what defines us. Through salvation, both Jews and the Gentiles are one. So the first point when you look at our reading from the Romans, Paul raises is that no one, no one is righteous. Not a single person meets the divine standard that is set aside by God. And we do not gain any acceptance before God because of our deeds. Now, I looked up the word righteous in the dictionary, and it means conformity to a standard. It refers to being morally right and justifiable. So Paul says no one is righteous, that none of us measures up to the divine standard of God's perfect holiness. And then he goes ahead and he explains why no one is righteous. And when we look at verse 10 to 18, he picks out a number of sinful acts. And we are going to go through these sinful acts. But I want to point our attention to the fact that these acts are also picked up from the Old Testament scriptures, including the Psalm, including Ecclesiastes, and including Isaiah, which we will look at some of those uh, similarities. And this reminds us that sin has been there from the beginning even the Old Testament times. So Paul says, I request us again to go back to our Bibles, and I will be picking up from verse 10 to 18. So he says, no one understands and seeks God. All have turned away and altogether become worthless. And there's no one who does good. Their tongues practice deceit, and their mouths are full of bitterness and cursing. Their feet are swift to shed blood. They do not know the way of peace, and there is no fear of God. And so we have all those lists. And when we look at Isaiah, if you get time, please go and read. 
and we will be looking, uh, we will, uh, if you read Isaiah 59 from verse 1 to 8, you will see the similarities in sins as well. We see the tongues that matter wickedness, uh, we see lips that have spoken lies, we see lack of peace, and feet that are swift to shed innocent blood. Indeed, none is exempt from sinning, including the days of the prophet Isaiah. And beloved, when we look at these sins, we see that these are sins against God. If you look at verse 10 and 12, we see that they are sins of the tongue. If you look at verse 13 and 14, and they are also crimes of violence against uh, one another. And you will agree with me that these things are things that happen in the midst of our every life. Indeed, we have fallen short in all our efforts to understand and seek God. And we do not even fear him either. We do not understand how holy God is and how sinful we are and just how much we need salvation. And I'll just take a time to look at the struggles sometimes we have in putting aside time to study God's word and even praying. And that alone tells us that we are so much challenged in the way we seek God. A friend of mine was sharing how easy it is for her to pick a novel, and I believe we identify with her in magazines and spend hours and hours reading the novel or even the magazine. But when it comes to reading the Bible, she takes time. And I believe we sometimes fall in the same situation. We spend very little time uh, looking at God's word. Now, when we seek God, it represents a true spiritual desire for God, as well as a love and a passion for him. If we cannot set aside time to read God's word and even seek him in prayer, then our following him, our seeking him becomes questionable. Our seeking him is also seen in the way we set our priorities, you know, including the resources that he has graciously blessed us with. Sometimes I wonder how we set aside um, our financial resources. For example, when we get monies, when we get, um, yes, when we get monies, what is our priority? We focus more on our needs and forget to give and forget to tithe. Jeremiah 29, 13 says that we will seek and find him when we seek him with all our heart. Are we seeking him with all our heart? This means that we really need to be purposeful as we seek God, including in the way we spend our time. Paul's, Paul also points out our sinfulness or our unrighteousness in our speech or even in our tongue. We are deceitful, we curse, and we are bitter. And our deceitfulness can be seen in the way we do things. And the most common one that I've spoken about and I like sharing is that when, you know, when we talk on the phone and we are asked where we are, and we know very well we are not where we are supposed to be, but we say we are there. May the Lord help us that truly we will always speak the right things. We will not be deceitful. We've also seen instances where we are very quick, to, our feet are quick to shed innocent blood. And if you look at our news, if you listen to our news, many times we have instances of unexplained death among our society. We've heard of persons who go missing and later on they are found dead. Or sometimes they just go missing and they will never be found. We've had situations where people are, people are killed within their homes and their bodies are hidden. And much later, they are found. Sometimes I feel like the land is really grieving because of the innocent blood that is sucked in. And we are also challenged in matters of peace. And we also see this within our families. We see the infightings that are within families. And the list goes on and on. Now, the second point that Paul raises, in addition to our unrighteousness, is that we are accountable to God. Again, when we make reference to verses 19 and 20, Paul says that no one, we cannot be declared righteous by observing the law. And we are accountable to God. As we have seen, we cannot keep the law perfectly. We cannot measure up to God's standard of holiness. And so all these sinful acts that Paul uh, points out are contrary to the law. And so he's pointing out that we cannot keep the law perfectly. However, the law gives us knowledge of sin, and therefore we are accountable to God. We cannot say that we do not know the law. We certainly know all the commandments. And we were even reminded this morning by our leader and if you come for the morning services, especially the 7 a.m., we sometimes go not just through the summary of the law, 
but we look at the Old Testament interpretation of the law and even the New Testament interpretation of the law. And so for us as Christians, as believers, really we have all the knowledge and therefore we are accountable before God. The law cannot save us because we cannot keep it as we say it. And this therefore reinforces that truly we need salvation and that salvation is only through faith in Jesus Christ. Knowing that we are, none of us is righteous and we are all under sin and we are all accountable to God. How then do we, respond to the, do we respond to this situation? And they will share with us three points. One of them is drawn from 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 to 10, which we also uh, share when, whenever we go through the, our services. So it says that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and, will, and just and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And we see two actions that are highlighted in this particular passage. And the first one is to acknowledge our sin. Our human nature is generally full of pride. And many times we find it a challenge to acknowledge that we are wrong. We want to assume that we are right and we do not want to say that we have sinned. We want to sometimes baptize the sin many other names. And when we look at our Bible again, ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, all of us are born with sin. And the more we acknowledge this, the more we will see our need for our Savior, and the more we will constantly seek the Lord. And so may the Lord help us that we will acknowledge our sinfulness, go before the Lord every other time and acknowledge that we are sinful. That makes us to know that we need the Lord because only him can take away our sins. Secondly, we also need to confess. Once we have acknowledged our sinfulness, we also need to confess our sins. We are reminded that we, when we confess our sins, God is faithful. He will forgive us our sins and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Again, this is one area that we really struggle with. We find it very hard to say sorry. And sometimes, even when we are on the wrong, we want to cover it up. We don't want to say we are sorry. We will instead do other things that show that we are sorry. But it is important to say that we are sorry. I've been in a situation sometimes, I've been in a situation where I've been caught by the police. And of course, we all know, I'm sure we've been in those situations sometimes. It sometimes feels like it is easier to give a bribe, but that is not really the right thing. That is the wrong thing. And sometimes we want to justify the bribe and call it something else. We want to call it a facilitation or we want to call it something else that is not right. It is always important to say sorry. The times when I've acknowledged that I'm wrong and I've said sorry, the police, they understand sometimes. And the situation that I was in, I was forgiven and let go. So may we learn to say sorry. Back to our story of Adam and Eve. When they were asked why they ate the fruit they had been commanded, commanded not to eat, Adam responded that it was the woman who you know, God had put there with him. Now, while Eve was asked the same, she said it was the serpent who deceived us, who deceived her. And so they were passing on the blame. They did not want to say sorry. And so I encourage us this morning, let us seek forgiveness when we have sinned, let us not blame situations or blame one another. Let us outrightly come out and say we are sorry. I encourage us to seek forgiveness, and not just from God, but also from those who have, whom, whom we have wronged. And Jesus captures this, very, captures this forgiveness very well, seeking forgiveness from one another. He captures it very well in Matthew chapter 5, when you look at verses 23 to 24 where he explains that you, when you're presenting your gift at the altar and you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift at the altar and go and seek first reconciliation, then come back and give your gift. That really emphasizes the importance of seeking forgiveness, not just from God, but from all those that we have wronged. And the best way to do it is to seek it on a daily basis, because we sin on a daily basis. We have been, we have been reminded of the sins that we, we commit. Thirdly, I also want to say that it is important to humble ourselves and be considerate to those who have sinned. Remember, none of us is righteous. And, you know, the Jews and the Gentiles were comparing themselves. And Jews were always feeling that they are better 
than the Gentiles. But remember, as mentioned earlier, we are all sinful, and we are not better than any other. Before God, we are all equal, and no sin is lesser or greater than the other. Sin is sin, and we are, you know, all have sin. So let us avoid comparing ourselves with others. But humility also demands that we are gentle with others when they sin. I've seen instances where we condemn others so, so, so hard, and especially if there are those that have been known to be committed believers or they are our clergy, we go full blast and we, we accuse them so harshly and we forget that we've all sinned. And I pray that next time we hear that a brother or a sister who is committed to the Lord has sinned, we will take time. We will take time to walk with them. We will take time to minister to them and encourage them so that they get back to their way. I want to mention that in the readings in Mark 7, the gospel reading, Jesus pointed out that it is from within, out of men's heart, that come evil thoughts. And he mentioned quite a number. We have sexual immorality, we have theft, we have murder, we have greed, and we have malice and deceit and many others. And so this is a challenge to us. What is the state of our hearts? Because we've been reminded that it is out of our hearts that this sinfulness comes. So may the Lord help us that we will also guard our hearts, that whatever comes from within our hearts will be pleasing to the Lord. And so as I finish in summary, this morning we have been reminded of the universality of sin. And Paul reminds us that no one, no one is righteous. We have all sinned, and we are accountable to God. And so knowing that we are sinful, we need to respond by acknowledging our sinfulness. And we need to go a step further and seek forgiveness from God, and even from those who we have sinned against. And uh, if you go to the reading and in Isaiah, Isaiah warns us that our sins separate us from God, and his face is hidden from us, and he will not hear. And so may we take time, may we take this warning seriously that, you know, as we go on sinning, it will separate us from God. Let us purpose to seek God. Let us purpose to honor a life that honors God. Uh, let us purpose to lead a life that honors God. And we pray that indeed we will also be gracious to those who are around us who have sinned against us. So may the Lord help us to walk a life that is pleasing to him. Let us pray. Almighty and loving Father, Lord, we are grateful that you are a loving God. And we thank you, Lord, that you remind us that none of us is righteous, Lord. Indeed, Lord, we have all sinned. And Father, we are accountable to you. Lord, we pray that you will take this to heart, that from time to time we'll acknowledge our sinfulness, that from time to time we'll confess our sins, Lord, and seek to come to you, our Savior. We pray, Lord, that you be with us for the rest of the day. And we pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.